The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman here. This is, I'm the host of the Tiger Technicians Hour. I'm also the author of the opening call. And for subscribers to my opening call this Wednesday night, we'll be having a, a webinar, 4 o'clock to 5.30. Uh, you can sign up. It's uh, You can always get your money back if you're not happy. I've got umpteen um, videos and archived on the different techniques. It's called the Power of the 914 EMAs. Uh, it's exponential moving average and other indicators in the Chapman Wave methodology. Wednesday, August the 23rd, 2023, 4 o'clock to 5.30 p.m., presented by TFNN. So I'll be discussing um, how to use the 914 exponential moving averages to assess sustaining power to prepare the, for the market turns. Remember, that's what we've been talking about. Let me actually put this in the side there. I'll put it over there now. As I'm talking, you can see what we're doing. So you saw the Dow, that nine-period moving average, uh, it took right. It took about eight or nine sessions before it crossed negative. That took it to a sell mode. That doesn't mean to say that what we're expecting right now is a bounce, but uh, that says that the trend is down until there's a, there's a significant change in the technicals. How to use the unbalanced volume in this particular instance it gave us the exact top on the August the first. There's that blue line turned around right on the on the button. <clears throat> Where we shorted, we still short. We actually now have a, a trading position on the long side. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to work out. Just it's only a trading. It's just a real short term. We could be out today. We could be out in two, three days. But I don't expect us to hold it for very long. We still call long from way back October. Um, how to use the 200 period exponential moving average. Look at this 200 period exponential moving average. Uh, look at the TLT. It was a TLT. No, it wasn't a TLT. Good grief. I had it in my mind right just a moment. Was it? Oh, that's right, the dollar. We were looking at the dollar. Look how it stalled right at the 200-period moving average. That's been a very, very strong resistance area for some time. Look, you can go every time. It's gone about six or eight bars, daily, daily bars above the 200-period moving average back in February of this, March of this year, and the 8th at 105.88. At a peak D with a doji candle high. Look how it turned down, then it tried to do it again back in late May, early June, held for about one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, 14 bars, and boom, it came all the way back down. Tried to test it again, beginning of July, hit it once, just missed it actually, the 200 period, plop, it came all the way down. And now it's right there and it's starting to hug that, except the difference is that. If you can see the stochastic at 91, I'll be talking about all these different things, holding steady in the 90% area, 88 to 90% over the next couple of days, that's going to say that that Chapman Wave inside wedge target repellent line up at 104, maybe 104.15, is a possibility, but that's all it is. I suspect that this 200 period moving average is more like a magnet right now. Uh, we'll be watching it very closely. So within that context, um, let's go back to what we're talking about here. Mm. Uh, let's see, there it is. Where is my, uh, if I can find it right there, there it is. Hit the P button, there it is. Um, bar symmetry, you know how I love, I've been showing you all for for weeks now, how we've got those arches or the cup formation where you can measure the number of bars on the left side coming down to the number of bars going back to the same level on the right, uh, or the or vice versa. We'll be talking about that, discussing how, how it, what we're looking at and why we're looking at it and why it's so important. And we'll be using these core tools plus many others. Uh, and I'll be doing a 90-minute, some of it if I can. I know I'm not promising, but it might be live because the futures will be open. And I'll be able to show you like the futures right here. The one-minute chart went to um, in the... 10-minute chart went to a peak. Gee look, how, gee, look how long it took for the nine-period moving average to turn down. Now it's gone green again, and there's no 
after a G in the Chavari methodology, you can't get an H. So this has to be called a B. No matter what happens, I have to, even if it's a failure pattern, I have to call it a B. And that says there's a chance that we can make slightly higher highs. We'll be watching this closely. Now let's get back to our story. And the story is that bonds um, just gap down to a leg F in the daily chart. This is a Chavari wave notation, leg F. Uh, the a G slash C. Now, talking about the left side, right side price time match, look at this. It's amazing. Here's the TLT. This is the uh, Lehman 20 year Treasury bond fund. 91.85 was, I should have put the date, right? I keep talking about it. The date was 28th of October. So here we go 8, so 28, 10, 28, 23. And the low today so far is 92.58. And look, I, I did this measured move to a particular candle because it didn't look like it could make a perfect arch and then an M shape, lowercase h, to a lowercase m. I'm going to be talking about all these patterns. And what happened uh, Friday was the, the measured move. Today's a day late, and it's gone down to a lower low. Ah, I tell you, look at the TBT. Where did I type TBT? I should have typed it. Oh, there it is by mistake. Right there. Put it over here. T, B, T, T, B, T. And look at that beautiful cup formation. But you know what's funny is that the bonds have just missed the left side low, but the right side, the left side high of the week of the 28th of uh, October was 39.32, 3.92%. Here we are, 36 uh, 3.627, 3627. So we haven't seen a commensurate exact move. So that's what I say very often is that the inversion of whatever you're looking at gives you a really good clue. And that's often what we've used. We use the DOG, which is the one to one short the Dow to, to kind of get a measured move um, of, of a particular stance to see how the mirror image is acting. And you can see that this has a little bit of a way to go. Let's see if the TLTNX, that's the 10-year. 10-year is TNX.X, and there it is. 43.33 um, was the high back in October of last year, and today the high is 43.32. We are two cents away from making a new recovery high. So that's the measurement that we want to look at. And look at the Chapman wave inside wedge target resistance line right there it went just above it Whew, this is going to be very interesting yields are going higher and that does affect the market that says to the market hey i'm having a little bit of trouble here oh let's just have a look at the uh, hgx that's the there we go hgx is did i type that in the right place oh there it is uh, made a peak C with an alternate count, maybe a D. It's pulling back a little bit, 3.56. Let's look at the daily chart that gives us a much clearer picture. Yep, made a lower low than Friday. This is the story that you're going to see a rotation that says whatever you think of that can go to the upside um, is going to have a tough time holding. That's why we, I decided that we would just take a small position, a little bit of an aggressive position, just in the possibility of a bounce. I'm not sure if that's going to hold. We've got a really tight stop on that, but we've kept our core short positions. Talking about short positions, let's see what SMH is. SMH is a semiconductor ETF, had a nice bounce at 2.37 at 148.50. Well, that's the reason why I've been taking little bits of our short uh, side of the SMHs. Hmm, we'll see where this goes because it's not really helping the market at this point. We'll be back. Buzz watch out for Tiger Click versus our Dow's down. Same. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, I had a question about XPeng Designs Develops Manufactures Smart EVs. Uh, this is trading up a dollar eighty-seven up twelve and a half percent. That's very nice. It's sixteen uh, fifteen point eighty-seven. This is uh, this is important. Why? Because this whole segment, this is Chinese, but the whole segment of the EVs, elect uh, electric vehicles, uh, I wouldn't say decimated, but they've had, some of them have had a really, really strong de uh, decline, especially the ones that, uh, when you look at the battery manufacturers, etc. So this is a period where maybe you can start to consider um, maybe tiptoeing in a very small position, because we're getting close to, in this case, the 200 period moving average is at 13.59. We got on Friday, we saw 13.70 something, I think it was. No, it was, did I say 13? I meant 15, sorry. Yeah, 13. Um, all right, so we did get to 14.21 on Friday, and today's high is 15. Is 16.92. I mean, that's a huge gain percentage-wise. But look what happened. This thing went basically not straight up. It, it had higher highs and higher lows. It didn't even bother about the 200 period moving average back in July on the way up. But it has gone from the sevens to the 20. I mean, almost a triple, right? To the 20, exactly, a 23.62 high. I may as well put that in here, 23.62 high, XPEV. I think it was 69, I said. And that's Xpen Inc. I don't know how you pronounce it. Designs, develops, manufactures smart EVs. And that goes red because it definitely got into sell mode in the in the week in the daily chart, sell signal to sell mode in the weekly chart. Very nice rebound. So I'm anticipating there's at least an opportunity here for some of the um, maybe. For some of that in that that particular sector to have a little bit of a bounce, but it might be very selective. Let's look at Tesla. I mean, Tesla is the king. 
And the king went to the 200 period exponential moving average from 299.29. It plops down to the 212 ish area. And now it's at 228, 229.94 this morning. Nice bounce. So this is what I'm saying. A little bit of a rebound. I would not call these anything more than rebounds. In that case, the core uh, sell mode that we're looking at is, is still unfolding. And uh, all I can say, we, we want to now look at the weekly charts because we closed the week on Friday. So now let's look. I had a question. Could you please look at the, the more intermediate term? So in the Dow, the Dow is now with the weekly chart. I said we hadn't even got to a sell signal until we have to wait for Friday's close. Friday's close said you can initiate the idea of a sell signal. But the MACD hasn't crossed negative. The stochastic at that point was over, it must have been in the 78% area. It's now at 77.61. This is the weekly chart. But there's a lot of evidence that suggests that the Dow <clears throat> weekly chart would at least get to a sell signal. It hasn't done that yet. I like to see closes below the 14 period moving average. We haven't had that. Weekly chart is still pretty good. Look at the S. Uh, SPX, this is the S&P. Look at that. It's giving back some of the gains up 13 right now at 43.83. The weekly chart did close under the 14-period um, moving average in an alternate count, G slash C in the weekly. And because there's a chance that that C can go to a D, I have to give it just a little bit longer. So we'll see if there is a close any day below the low of Friday, which in the S&P's case is 43.35.31, if there is a close below that, I will have to issue a sell signal and maybe even by Friday an upgrade to a sell mode in the weekly chart. But so far, it hasn't even given the sell signal. Um, the monthly chart is still acting pretty nicely technically. Looking at the QQQ, this is where there was a little bit more pain in the shorter term because at 387.98 back around the 27th of July, it, it dropped to the 14 period moving average in the daily, then ran up. And failed to go to a higher height, made this right arm extend. Sorry, it made this right shoulder failure pattern, and that became the dreaded H. But it was at a C, and it still dropped sharply. So the low at three on the uh, on the QQQ at 354.71 on Friday, uh, below the low of June the 26th. 357.59, that is not good action at all. So as we're looking at this, we're looking at the <clears throat> for the, the pink nine-period moving average. We couldn't even get to the price for the last four sessions. That's a 364.31. And if you look at the weekly chart, having closed below, it says you're really close to a sell signal. I need a little bit more evidence to say that if I'm going to give it a couple of days, well, it's a weekly chart. I have to wait till Friday at 4 o'clock. And the monthly chart had a really good single leg A up. And I wouldn't be surprised if in August that becomes a peak A. All right. So in that context, let's look at the IWM to get to get these major indices done. Uh, one, 184.23 down 42 cents. Hasn't taken out the, uh, in fact, from June, it's may be making higher lows. But that weekly chart had a very, at a, at a peak C. Uh, in the left side, right side, price time match, perfect to the low that was made. The Not the original low, but the low that I chose from this particular candle. Well, we're talking about that on, on Wednesday night. What kind of candles do I use? What do I like? You know, I talk about the Chapman Wave Roman candle, such an important ingredient in my work. Um, and now let's look at the double top that was made. How these double tops form is just in, uncanny. So you go to a high in February, the week of the 3rd of February at 199.26. I mean, 199, what did I say? 199.26, uh, February, the, I, I think I said the 9th. It's a quarter of the 9th for now. 2-3, um, 199, not 1999. Some people who are long would love to see that. And then the high was 198.75, less than a point away after all that time, five months, it goes to February, almost six months, it goes to the 27th of July, 198.75, and there's your double top. Except that the MACD was much better than it was before. The stochastic was actually much better, and the unbalanced volume was way higher. So that says to me, monitor this closely, because it's saying that they could, we don't know yet, but there could be some internal strength 
in the Russell iShares Russell 2000 ETF, and that will make itself known on this potential attempt at a rebound. If it can close over 187, 188, that resistance area um, at any point in the next week or two, that will say, oh, that's interesting. If it just can't get there and 186 turns around, if it can even get there and then fails, hmm, that's really poor. Dow's down 117. S&P is up six. This is, uh, this is going to be a tough one. Looking at the E-mini, there was a double top. Yeah, this is fascinating. So that's an ABC. And it goes down low. So you can't count that. Oh, this is that failure. For, it's almost like an Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down from early in the morning. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but it does happen. Uh, to say this is the one time that the Chapman Wave methodology does not give you a peak A, B, C, D, but fails at a peak B, in this case the 10-minute chart, uh, because of that early opening spike of failure. That's those, those are the times you've got to be really careful. I'll be back in a moment. Uh, Basil Chap, Tiger, you get to sell. We'll talk about these moving averages. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more, and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. Uh, let me just get this 4390. Um, it's at 92. I think it is 92. Um, yeah. 
So let me show you something here. I didn't have a chance to do it because I was preparing for the show and other things were going on. But normally I would do this. <clears throat> I was looking at it. I couldn't understand what was going on, but I was just looking at it peripherally because I was so busy with other things. But this is what I would have done here. This is make it pink. Make it pink. Make it a little bit smaller because I would have typed it in smaller. So... This is what I call, there's a Chapman Wave Instant Restart at a peak D. We'll be talking about this for those of you who use my Chapman Wave methodology and know about the uh, the Instant Restart and the flat base restart and the unconventional flat base restart. But what I would have done is, with this decline right here, with the Instant Restart and the pattern that I was looking at and going to a higher high at a G slash B, there is no H. And, the, and if there was going to be a failure at C, I was going to do this, and then I just I didn't have time to do anything. But I would have done this to say, there's a chance that whatever highs we make, because we keep coming back to the starting point, we should come back and retest this particular low right here. And that's this low right here. That's the low at 44.93. And that would be the time match that I'd be looking at right there. And that solves the problem. And it says that's a technique that I developed just because of this very choppy, choppy, choppy pattern that says, how can you count that? I call it the Bart Simpson hairstyle. It's a spiky, spiky hairstyle. And it goes up and it comes, but it keeps coming back to the low after peak D. And if it takes it out, um, then it becomes uh, an unconventional flat-based restart. Oops, I should have made this as a flat-based restart, but I didn't know at the time. But it says, watch out, because you're going to come back no matter how high you get. You're going to keep chop, chop, chop. And then the one one slide should be to test that low, which is what, what it's done. So within that context, what we're looking at here in the Dow, Dow down 168, <clears throat> SB down three point three uh, up 3.43. <clears throat> now I can talk about some other things. You see this chart? Uh, oh, I haven't got it. I'm gonna. Can I put it in? Yes, I'll put it in right now. So we're going to be talking about, and this is something you can do. It's so easy. You just put on the nine period moving average, put in the fourteen period moving average, um, and you have them cross over. There's just you, you overlay the one. You should be able to just hit it, drag it, and overlay. And in this particular instance. In my case, when it, it when it flips negative, it flips to pink. If it goes negative, and if it's positive, it goes to green. So what I said was, I won't be able to tell the depth, the seriousness of of this particular pattern, this rollover pattern, especially for the Dow, until I see the width of the nine period moving average, the aperture, the the distance between the fourteen period and the pink nine period moving average, and I see it uh, expanding, or if it just contracts and it keeps very narrow, it says, hey, be careful, there could be some real sharp moves over the 14 period moving average. When it starts to expand like this, it says, in this case for the Dow, 34,778, we're at 34,328, so that's uh, 400 and about 50 points high. That's extremely strong resistance. The day's young. But we've already failed on the first attempt at it. At this should have been a rally that started off really good and then failed, scared the daylights out of everyone. And then later in the session, really started to pick up steam and went through to Tuesday, maybe the very beginning of Wednesday, and then it should fail. That's the way I was looking at it. If, I said on Thursday, if Friday is a really negative close, then Monday we should get a much stronger Counter trend rally, a very overbought situation in the volatility index. Let's just go to the volatility index right here. Fix. There it is. Mm -mm. And it is holding, it's getting closer to the 1836 level where the 200 period moving average is. It's 1784. Yeah, on Friday it went uh, to almost 19. Then it pulled back at the close, had an inverted Chapman Wave uh, a Roman candle, candle. And that says to me that if today the volatility index, oh, I forgot, I think I might have mentioned this uh, in my um, 
overview video on on that I did Friday night. I sent it out um, and on Friday night. That if the volatility index goes over eighteen point thirty for about uh, sixty to ninety minutes on Monday, um, that's today. <clears throat> You could see a, a test of Friday's high. I don't know. The day is young. We'll see if that's going to happen. All right. So let's just get this. Let's just put this in perspective. Where are we? I like to use the SMHs as a kind of a, a raw shot. This is this is some kind of a, a test of the general market. Uh, I can't call it trajectories because it's just telling me where it's going but the lookout period so the lookout period says the weekly chart and the SMH is the semiconductors closed for two weeks underneath the 14 period moving average right now it's above but the way the nine period moving average is pulling back it says it's still got internal strength so just be ready for some kind of balance MACD's negative stochastics at 70 percent on balance volume the blue line is very negative so there's enough res residual strength to say that whole area of 143 to 142 is going to be very important support. If by Friday, this coming Friday, we've got a whole five sessions to go. If the SMH is trading at 148.09 up $1.96, oh, I should have clarified. Uh, we, we are short. We are short from uh, the morning. So we had 161.17 on the 31st of July. With a doji candle, my technique said that we are really close to some kind of a, a deeper pullback. We had a, a green candle the following day, but we made a lower low, and I didn't like the action at all. I went through all the different uh, key stocks and the semiconductors, including NVIDIA. Then I said, nope, I think we're going down. So before the market opened, we went short the, the uh, SMHs <clears throat> and a kind of aggressively short the uh, via the SOXS, that's three times short ETF. And um, we've done, we've taken a little bit off, we've added, we've taken a little bit off and added again, but we've got a core position in, in all of them. That's the SMH and the SOXS. And I'm anticipating that this rally is going to give us the absolute, a tremendous amount of information because each rally, you know, there's a pattern that I call the dreaded H. Oh, I don't know if I can get to it. I can. Yes, I can. There it is. It's where you come down, you, not you, the price comes down, and then it's it, it, almost like a straight line. And then, and then what it does, I'm just looking at to see before I get a panic. Did I lose my charts? No way. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so what happens is it comes down and it has a rally. And it's red because if it has a rally and fails at a peak A or a B and then takes out that left side low, it can go a lot lower. Well, the dust called the dreaded H. There was a dreaded H there, peak A minus, it failed, peak A there, and a peak A here. And we're in leg A at this particular point. Is this going to fail? That's the big question. I'll be back in a moment with Basil Chapman, Tiger Junior Slow, Dallas Down 161. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks, we're back. I had a question. Um, uh, Basil, I realized the question more for an economic show, but you should, could, could you shed some light on how you see... Whoops, there we go. Uh, how you, can you see... Let me if I can read that. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a question, and you're right. I mean, it is really an economics question. Um, how you see the most impactful reasons for dollar rising. I have this weird thing that says, I, I remember from the yen way back when in 1980s, when General Motors decided they would, they would really be progressive, they would use plastic parts for engines or whatever it is. Whatever the G General Motors did was abominable. I mean, abominable. The, the union should have said, we will not accept that. Um, you've got to look after us while making the best product you can, and you're forcing us to do stuff that is just inconceivable. Well, they pay the penalty for that. And at the very same time in the 80s, I saw that Toyota was just really improving the, the, the Toyota, just getting better and better and better. And I, I remember the, the, the yen was kind of strengthening, and it, to me it seemed like it was a, like an emblem of the success of the economy. Um, so within that context, I've always looked at the currency of the focal point in the whole economic spectrum of, of earnings, etc., as being kind of important. And I think the United States, even today, even with all the things that are going on, still is, is pretty much at the top. And therefore, I think the dollar, in a way, represents that. Now, I don't think that's in, in, in the economic framework at all. I don't think there's any textbook that would ever say that. This is just my empirical. You can't base it on one or two countries or anything. But it seems to correspond to what I'm thinking. So we've been along the dollar since 2018 via the UUP. That's the uh, dollar bull. It's the fund. And we saw it go all the way. Uh, the price gets changed. But let me just go through this here. We watched it go all the way to, uh, so it's 2018 right there. We saw it go to 102.99 and then it came down and went all the way to 100. And what did I think? What was it? 114, 114.78. 
back in uh, September of 2022. We've taken little bits off, but we've kind of kept it. And I've kept it more for that reason than on a, on a technical basis. And yet, look at the nine. This is what I'll be discussing in great years. I know it's going to help a lot of you. Um, looking at the nine period moving average in the monthly chart, it turned positive. So we are long from over here. Watch it go all the way up, come down. The UUP held. Uh, so we didn't get stopped out. It's still that original position. And look at this. It went to an alternate count F slash E. I think it's actually an F in the monthly chart. And yet that nine period moving average has been narrowing, but it's still positive. So I'm going to kind of stay with the stance that on a purely technical level. I'm going to say, you know, your icon of the United States is em emblematic of, of, of growth and all that. Obviously, that's under tremendous pressure right now. But that's just my thinking. So I hope I, I didn't answer you in a purely economics way. I answered you in a in a kind of a, a more emotional and and then a technical way. So that doesn't really answer your question. But in the shorter term, look, it's walking. It's above the four, the two hundred period moving average. But this is the first time, and this is going to be very important. That's the reason why I'm watching what happens <clears throat> very closely. This is the first time since. That June, uh, May, June high, where the nine period moving average was acting great. The 14 period, it was way over the 14. The price was way over both. They were all over the, the, um, no, they were, that's right, I remember now. So the nine period moving average was above the two, 200 period moving average, but that 14 didn't and it failed. So for the 14 at 102.88. Now, in the daily chart, it has a long way to go to go get over the 103.15 level. Why? Because it's a lagging indicator, and this dollar will have to probably go to 104.30 or something even higher before you could get that. So all in all, what I'm looking at is um, I'm staying with that particular thesis, and we'll see what happens. The whole thing is how do we hit the – if we may even get to the double top, what do we do? We had a double a top to this bar right here, not the high of 105.88 on the 8th of uh, the week of the, no, on the 8th of March, but the 15th of March went to 105.10. The last high was at 104.70. So we might see a trend line here. In fact, I'll draw it in. First of all, I'll draw it in from here to make it a little bit more gentle, and then I'll draw it in from here. So from here, it says. Yeah, all right. We've got the 200. You've got the Chapman Wave Inside Wedge Target Resistance Line, and you've got this trend line at about just under 104. This one's much deeper, and I don't like all these lines. I'm going to take them out. Oh, this one. Look at that. We're right testing it at this one from the high of March to the high of um, June. Either it was late May or early June, and to where we are right now. So this will be the first one. Let me just. I'll keep it for the moment. I'll make it dashed gray this one I'll make dashed light blue there okay so here we are we're looking at those things <coughs> of course I had to get the sneeze in uh, let's look at the EUR USD this is the euro dollar currency pair look at that a doji candle two three dojis at the top right there I love that and you make a high on the 18th of July at 1.12757, and you're at 1.088, and the 9 p.m. moving average is still under the 14. It looks like the uh, orange 1.080, 200 period exponential moving average, is going to be a target at some point. Uh, I could do a left side, right side price time match, but I'd rather just go to USD JPY. That's, see, bar symmetry was taken out there. Uh, we're in leg E, but it could be an alternate count, but I'm calling it as an E right now, and it's trading up 86 cents at 146.26. Um, wow, that's all I can say. This is good action. That's another reason, I think, why, why the market cannot hold rallies. So, as I say, we did, we've got short positions, but just as a trade, I said, for just as this is a real, it could be a very quick trade. Wow, was it a quick trade? At a one-point stop on the UDOW, we've gone in at 60, and it's trading right now at 58.65. I did not want it. I didn't want to risk. I mean, this is what one and a little bit percent on a three times 
uh, three times along. How often can you have that kind of risk? No risk at all. But we're out in and we're out. Doesn't matter. I am not to the no games. We've got another one. I made a wider stop because I think it's in the process of attempting to form some kind of a basis. Now, this is fascinating because I had a question about um, uh, you, you, you. Four U's. One, two, three, four. Um, is that the better one to get in the energy fuels uh, uranium uh, area? It's very good. It's trading at uh, up 24 cents, at up 3.69 cents, 574. Um, yeah, I, I like it. I'm just going to take a moment here to. We actually have UEC, which is the um, uranium energy core. Fabulous move up 4.7% today. It's trading at 4.03. I'll talk about the two of them. I need to put them both together. Be back in a moment. Attention traders and investors. Are you ready to elevate your game in the stock market? On August 23rd, join Basil Chapman, the mastermind behind the renowned Chapman Wave methodology in a subscriber-exclusive 90-minute webinar. From 4 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern, dive deep into the secrets of the 914 moving average, decode market turns, and get a head start on the stock outlook for September and October. The golden opportunity is free for all opening call subscribers. And if you're not on board yet as a subscriber, here's the deal. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Zero risks, all rewards. So what are you waiting for? Visit the front page of TFNN.com now and secure your spot. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So we're looking at you, 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 and this is Energy Fuels Inc., Uranium Stock. You know, I, I like it. I like the action. I like the way it's held the 200 free moving average. The 9 is above the 14. It's breaking away, but it means that the magnitude of 625 is there. So that's 50 cents. That's like a 9% risk. So I'm going to suggest, uh, Joe, that you you just nibble right here. Uh, you've lost the, the impetus for that having risk reward from the bottom now you've got this cup formation that's trying to go to the seven, which was around about the high in June, and it's trading at 672, but you've got a higher risk reward. 
But out of the two, um, UEC, you see, this is the difference, is that it's already on its way in this beautiful cup formation. Uh, well, well, I should say that we are long from 364. It's at 401 right now. Um, I, this has done the one-to-one, -one, the Chapman Wave expansion uh, from the Falling Axe breakout. It does, it's, it's kind of at that resistance right now. This is the one that I think is a little superior, in, but now it's at, at 4.02. Either one of these, you could just start a little position and wait for a pullback, and then you can add. And let's look at it again. But in the meantime, the question was, uh, do, do I like it? Which one's better? I think UEC is the one, Uranium Energy Core. And I, as I say, I'm not talking my book because, you know, this is, you know, subscribers have had it for a little while. So, um, but it, it seems to me that that's just a better one. So just on the on the day, we're down 159. There's still room for a little burst of energy, but I think we lost that upside impetus. And that just says that you've, you've got to be careful here that we've, with the TBT so strong, that's the inversion of the ultra short. There's the ultra short Lehman 20 year treasury bond fund. This is probably a leg F, but it could be an alternate count. But that's just saying that yields are going to be a factor and it is impacting those home builders. So we've got this rotation going on. So just be real careful. Anything you do with trading on the long side, you've got to be in the right sector, but also you've got to have very tight stocks. Have a wonderful rest there. Check out the front page of TFN for my webinar coming up on Wednesday night with the moving averages and all these different